In this video, I will tell you everything you need to know about traveling to one of the prettiest of the beaten path island groups in Indonesia. Hi, my name is Boris and welcome to my channel High on Low Tide, which is about exploring lesser known tropical travel destinations like beautiful islands and beaches. In this video I will talk about the Kei Islands in Indonesia because recently I finished a series of travel vlogs from my recent trip there and I thought I should put together all the necessary practical information that you need when you travel to the Kei Islands because honestly I believe if you have seen my videos I think they made you want to visit, uh, not because I'm such an awesome videographer, but, but these islands are super special. Honestly, when it comes to tropical paradise without the crowds, well, the K islands are hard to beat. If you haven't seen those videos, definitely check them out. I don't think you will be disappointed. At least you won't be disappointed in the beauty of the islands that I guarantee. This video is gonna be long, but it's gonna be useful. I will start with some rules that don't only apply to the K Islands, but to remote parts of Indonesia, Indonesia as a whole, because traveling to remote parts in Indonesia can be a very different experience than visiting Bali or some other touristy islands. One of the golden rules is that Indonesia is pretty much offline. Now, this doesn't mean you can't have internet access. Normally there is phone signal everywhere where there are villages. And of course, in bigger cities, you can even find Wi-Fi too. So you can be connected to the internet. Getting a local SIM card is a great idea. But my point is most of the local businesses like accommodations and taxi drivers and such, they are not advertising themselves online, so you can't really find them, or at least not all of them. That is the main reason why this beautiful and huge country is mainly unexplored by tourism, or at least by foreign travelers, because, yeah, the information is just uh, not online. But don't worry, because organizing your trip once you are at your destination is actually super easy. In the past, I used to make a big deal of planning for a trip I try to find all the necessary information, I try to book things online, and I know that a lot of people do this too, but you have to change this mindset when it comes to Indonesia. Not finding a lot of options for accommodation, for example, doesn't mean that there's no accommodation at all. You can absolutely manage all aspects of your trip once you are at your destination. I know this can be a little scary, but actually it's part of the fun. Social media can be helpful even regarding remote islands. You can find some pictures or even reels on Instagram. You can even find a few like tour agencies or local guides here and there. But in my experience, they try to overcharge you when you contact them online. So I think the best advice that I can give you is try to make a list of places you want to visit, but don't worry about the details. You can you can get a taxi, you can get accommodation, you can organize boats and all that once you are there for a much better price than what you will find online, if you find anything at all. I will talk about the logistics later on. So let's talk a little bit about the safety issues, safety concerns. Is it safe to visit Indonesia? What kind of dangers? Um, you might face if you visit some remote parts of Indonesia. The biggest issue one can encounter is probably malaria and then fever. Uh, these can happen everywhere in Indonesia, outside of touristy islands or cities. It's not very common though and actually with necessary precautions like for example mosquito repellents and uh, mosquito nets that are normally provided at uh, guest houses, you can keep the risk low. Still, it might be a good idea to carry some malaria pills with you just in case. Yeah, just keep this in mind. But actually, this shouldn't stop you from traveling. Other safety issues like, for example, stuff like you would normally worry about in like European cities like theft or tourist scams, stuff like that. 
those are practically non-existent in Indonesia. The people are super friendly and, and the places are just very safe everywhere you go. There are a lot of other things I could talk about when it comes to Indonesia as a travel destination in general. Uh, I'll probably make, uh, make another video in the future about it, but now let's focus on the K Islands. So, where are the K Islands and how to get there? Well, the K Archipelago is an island group in southern Maluku province of Indonesia, quite near Australia. South Maluku is huge. There are other groups of islands here, namely Tanimbar, Aru, and some small remote islands near East Timor. The K Archipelago consists of 47 islands, and the majority of them is the picture-perfect tropical paradise, with white sandy beaches and shallow turquoise waters. There are two large islands in the group, K Besar and K Kecil. Besar means big and Kecil means small in Indonesian. And even though Besar is the bigger one, hence the name, K Kecil is the archipelago's main island. The airport and the busiest port are here and also most of the accommodation options. There are lots of amazing small offshore islands near K Kecil. So in this regard as well, K Kecil is the best base to explore the area. Getting to the K Islands is quite easy, although it takes time. The best way of coming here is by planes. The airport is on the island of K Kecil outside the city of Tuval. The airport code is LOVE. L-U-V. Yeah, I think it's pretty funny. As of now, Wings Air and Lion Air each have one flight daily to and from Ambon, the regional capital of Maluku. Ambon is connected to the rest of the country. You can find flights to and from Jakarta, Makassar and Sorong, plus there are regional flights to other parts of Maluku as well. Alternatively, if you have the time, you can take the Pelni ship from Ambon. Pelni is the national cargo and passenger shipping company of Indonesia, playing a major role in the transportation when it comes to remote locations. You can find Pelni ships all across Indonesia, but keep in mind that their website doesn't always work and the schedules are often not really updated because, right, schedules can change quite often. So if you plan to take a penny somewhere, the best is if you try to find out departure times shortly before your trip. The best is when you arrive to your location, just uh, go to the port and ask around. Pelnies cover long routes, so Usually, for example, from Ambon to the K Islands, there's a Pelni ship that runs once in every two weeks. You shouldn't bother trying to book this online. You don't have to because the ships are huge. Uh, there are lots of places on them. They are not very fast, but they are reliable. Although the schedules change every now and then. The economy class on Pelni ships is not very comfortable, but you can always find a cabin that provides more comfort on longer journeys because yeah, journeys are long. From Ambon to the K Islands, it takes usually one full day, mostly also because there is a stop at the Banda Islands, which is an awesome stop. If you have the time, you should explore the Banda Islands as well. Let's talk about accommodation on the K Islands. If you check online, for example, on booking.com, you can find a few options, but not all of them. There are lots of simple guest houses and hotels in the main city of Tuval, but you shouldn't really stay in the city because it's quite far from the beaches, which are the main attractions of the K Islands. The best area to stay at is the long beach that is called Pasir Panjang, but actually right now it has two separate names, the two end of the, the beach. Uh, if you check on Google Maps, uh, it's called Pantai Gursar Nadan, Pantai means beach and the southern end is called Pantai Gurblot, but actually it's just one long beach and it is a super pretty one too. So there are a few guest houses that are built or that were built in the recent years along this beach, but this beach is very long so it's very far from being crowded. I stayed at a place called the Coaster Cottages at the northern end of the beach uh, because of a few reasons. Firstly, because I visited the K Islands in 2017 and I stayed there. That's the place I found first and I had a great time. And honestly, since 2017, nothing has changed. Not even the prices. <laughs> I'm not kidding. 
The cheapest room costs 165,000 Indonesian rupees for two people. Actually, it's the same for single occupancy as well. And because it is a bit far from the village, they can cook your meals if you want to. And three meals cost 135,000 rupees, and they are they are actually amazing. So for one day, one night, I paid 300. Thousand rupees or like 20 US dollars and that came with a full board So yeah, it's crazy the value you get is insane The rooms are simple but clean there is a mosquito net and a simple bathroom in the room Plus there is water coffee and and tea you can drink all day There's a big porch and the whole place is just behind one of the nicest beaches you have ever seen it is at the north end of the beach. The location is a little remote, but they can hook you up with motorbikes or even with cars along with a driver. Plus they can organize boats for boat trips, which is the best thing to do in the K archipelago. I would like to mention that I did not get paid to recommend this place for you. It is my own honest opinion. I'm going to write down the owner's WhatsApp number in the description if you feel like contacting this place. Uh, the owner speaks good English and yeah, by the way, WhatsApp is king when it comes to communication in Indonesia. I can really recommend this place. It's really nice, but uh, you can see other places, for example, even Google Maps. So, you know, once you are there, you can just go around and uh, check those places out and yeah, you will find something for sure. Let's talk about food, transportation and other activities and what they cost. If you stay near the Long Beach, you will most likely eat your meals at your guest house because simply there aren't many restaurants around. But if you decide to explore the island, which uh, you should, you can find different restaurants, especially in the main town of Tuval. Probably my best food experience was at a place called Forganza Cafe, which is a restaurant on the coast near Tuval. It is built on stilts and it overlooks a pretty bay. They serve a local dish, a kind of seaweed salad with a bubbly kind of seaweed, which interestingly is famous in Okinawa, Japan as well. And of course they have a nice selection of seafood and other local dishes. I came here with other tourists I met on my trip. Actually, we came here three times because the food is so good and it is so affordable. The bill always came out to be around 100,000 rupees per person, which is like seven US dollars. And yeah, it's awesome. So the food is quite affordable in the K Islands. Transportation is another big expense. The taxi from the airport to the Long Beach normally costs 150,000 rupees or about 10 dollars, 10 US dollars, but it gets significantly cheaper if you rent a car with a driver for a couple of hours or even for a full day. The price always depends on the duration and the distance of the trip, but expect to pay about 4, 500,000 rupees for a full day. That's about 25 or 30 US dollars. Going around Keikechil Island makes a great trip and the best way to do that is by car or by motorbike. The distances can be big. Motorbikes usually go for around 200,000 rupees or so, which is about 13 US dollars as of now. Boat rental is another aspect that is very important because coming to the K Islands and staying only on K Kachil, not visiting the awesome offshore islands would be a crime. Don't do it. The price for a boat depends on the distances, basically on how much gasoline the boat would need. Short trips with smaller boats, like the three islands in front of Pasir Panjang Beach, where most of the accommodations are, can be as cheap as four or five hundred thousand rupees. And there could be a group of five or six people on the boat. So if you have someone to share this cost with, this can be pretty cheap. Longer trips, for example, to islands like Gurtafur, which is one of the prettiest spots in the region. The boat can cost around somewhere between a million and a million five hundred thousand rupees. That's around 65 to 100 US dollars. You have to negotiate. Let's talk about the weather. When to visit the K Islands? Well, uh, this isn't an easy topic. Statistically, the best time to come here is between April and October. But keep in mind that tropical weather doesn't always follow the statistics because I visited the K Islands in January, which is normally supposed to be the worst time to go there. But I had amazing weather, clear skies, 
beautiful sunshine basically every day. The winter season is actually called like the west wind season. Keep in mind that some of, especially like the remote uh, small offshore islands can get uh, some big waves. There can be some trash on some of them, not everywhere though. But but yeah, even, even in low season, you can get uh, pretty good weather. Since you know that the beaches are the main thing, the main attraction, you have the best chances for beautiful weather in the summer months, but I think you can have a great time anytime you go there. There you have it. Now you should be well equipped to visit this beautiful island grove that is called the K Islands in South Maluku, Indonesia. If you have any questions or maybe I missed something, don't hesitate to write a comment below. And right, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and if you enjoy places like the K Islands, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because my video series about Indonesia has just begun. I visited other awesome locations in this beautiful country. Indonesia is my, my favorite country in the whole world. In the coming videos, I will show you why. All right, thank you for your time. Have an awesome day and see you in the next video.